What's up guys, Lego here with Dyna Demos, bringing you the second Dyna Lowrider S walk around. So the last one was posted almost two years ago and a lot's changed since moving out to California. So if that sounds interesting to you, please stay tuned. And if you guys happen to like the video, please make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Here she is. So before I talk about what I've done to it, let me briefly talk about how a Dyna Lowrider Rest comes stocked. So Harley made this in 2016 and 2017. 2017 was when they discontinued Dynas. So this is a special edition Dyna, which came with the Screaming Eagle 110, which was the biggest motor that they put stock into a Dyna. It also came with uh, uh, dual calipers in the front which is awesome, uh, gives a lot of braking power. It came with the poop brown mag wheels that is special to the Dyna Lowrider S. It also comes standard with uh, ABS like I mentioned, and it also has cruise control. I don't think any other Dyna has cruise control. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, it also comes with a key fob which I'm not sure if that is different from uh, some of the newer Dynas. So now that I've talked about what the bike comes like stock, I'm gonna talk about some of the things that I've done to it, uh, some of the upgrades that I've made to it that have made the bike more comfortable for me riding it. So starting with the bars and the risers, these are both from Big Al's. Uh, I believe these are their low bend bars, which are about two inch rise. And then they're six and a half pullback. Uh, which add eight and a half overall. That's a uh, pretty comfortable for me in my riding position. Uh, before I had the Lucky Dave's Lucky 13s, which they were also comfortable, but I think with this setup, I can ride a little bit more aggressive and I like that out here for uh, San Diego. Now, the gauge pods normally don't come up on the bars, uh, but what I've done is I've relocated them because I hated freaking looking down. Now, I know some hard asses that were in our comments because we made a video about this. They're just talking about how they don't need to see their speed, they feel the road. That's probably the stupidest thing I've ever heard, uh, but whatever. So, gauge pods by KNS Customs. He also sells the, the uh, dash cover. And then I believe now he even sells the wiring harness, but when we did the video, we got the wiring harness from Gorilla Cables. So that's how my bar is set up. It's pretty, uh, pretty good for me. It leaves me at a comfortable riding position and I'm about 5'8". Over here, moving to the front, I got a San Diego Customs bar bag. I mean, bar bags are, you know, you just put stuff in them. But if you guys were wondering, this is the helicopter that I work on. This is a CH-53 Echo, most badass helicopter that the military has to offer. It's a freaking war chariot. Now in the older video, I had a Moons MC headlight. This, uh, this one is the Flyeye V2. In the old video, I had the V1, so just the version one. Uh, what Some of the things that they changed, I think the LEDs are actually brighter now and they added turn signals, which I don't have set up because I'm freaking lazy and I need to make a video. I feel super bad, but I got deployed. But this headlight is super bright and I freaking love it. Shout out to Moons MC for their badass products. Down here with the motor mount, this is the Chopper Haas motor mount. I actually got this from uh, somebody so I didn't have to pay re retail. I got it a little bit cheaper. Uh, the idea behind it is it adds stability and it also doubles as a brace for the front motor mount. Uh, so if you ever get the front wheel off the ground, it's supposed to brace the impact a little bit better. So that's why I got it. Uh, the, the crash bar is a FXR division uh, and it's the extended version. It's a little bit wider to uh, account for the Chopper Haas motor mount and how it mounts. I used to have the IMZZ Elite crash bar, which was awesome too, because I actually tipped my bike over in a parking lot and it saved it from uh, scraping on the ground. So my tanks, my tank, thanks IMZZ, thank you. I got the TBR Gen 1, you guys can see this exhaust. 
I'm gonna be honest, Gen 1s are freaking trash. This is a mod. If you guys see this, tip blew off once, hit them up, got it replaced. Tip blew off a second time. They wanted me to pay to uh, get it welded on. And I was like, you know what? If you guys still make me pay, then just forget about it. Cause these uh, exhausts are trash and I'm never gonna get a TBR again. Just being honest, whatever. Uh, Flow Motorsports pegs. These things uh, have seen better days. I was getting it, as you can see. Boom. SNS Stealth intake uh, retails for about two hundred dollars. Still doesn't have a cover on it. And then, since I have an intake and exhaust, I also have an FP3 tuner. A lot of people are like, you need to get a Power Vision, but for what I ride and stuff, uh, FP3 is completely fine. You know, if I ever decide I wanna get super hardcore, I might get a Power Vision. Uh, but that's what I got. Uh, back here, just some Arlen S foot pegs for the passenger, nothing special. Now, if you guys look at this freaking gap and you guys want to get that gap, you got to get some 14 inch rear shocks. So I have these Bung King sliders, which I think are pretty dope. Uh, they add a little bit of flair, you know, and then I also got those RWD RS ones, 14 inch. These things are like riding on a freaking cloud. Okay. I remember when I had the stock shocks, Rod used to hit bumps. I used to hit bumps and I'd be like, man, did you feel that? And he was like, what are you talking about? So these things are like riding on a cloud. So some of the things that I had to do to get this fender to mount, if you're looking at a carbon fender, uh, I needed to drill the holes on the side a little bit wider to accept the bolts for the, the struts. Uh, I also had to drill the hole for the license plate bracket and I had to drill the hole for the tail light, uh, for the integrated tail light. And then on the inside, I actually had to make a bracket because there was nothing for the uh, tail light to hold on to. So it's a little bit of work. Uh, I also had to drill out the tail, uh, the bolt for the, the seat. Uh, which really isn't a big deal, but you know, if you're not into doing a little bit of work, then a carbon fender probably isn't for you. Uh, I also had to get it clear coated. Now it came out to about $700 total. Um, but realistically, if your bike doesn't come with a full fender and you're going to get one from Harley, you're going to spend about the same amount of money. And we actually have an install video for this. So if you're interested, check it out. And shout out to Moons MC. That's what this tail light is. Now in my old video, I know I didn't have this, but I talked about it. The freaking chain kit. Look at that thing. Why did I get a chain kit? You're probably wondering. Well, chains look way more badass. And that's why I got it. It also adds a little bit of torque, all right? Because you don't have any stretch of the uh, belt, just instant torque. So this is the TMF kit. He doesn't sell this specific kit anymore, but if you're looking at getting a chain kit for a Dyna FXR or whatever, I recommend TMF. I got about 15,000 miles on this chain kit, have not had any problems. Also, if you wanna get one installed and you're in San Diego, hit me up, I'll give you a deal. Now for a seat, obviously you gotta have a step up. This is the Lucky Dave step up, diamond stitched, nothing special there. Uh, just a good overall seat. All right, guys, last mods that I'm gonna talk about are the Alloy Art Shift Linkage. Uh, super improvement over stock. This thing's never gonna leave you stranded. And then the flush mount gauge caps. Boom and boom. Really clear, cleans up the tank, in my opinion. Uh, I freaking love them. They look way better than the chrome ones on a blacked out bike. So you guys are probably wondering, well, how much does all that cost? How much does the bike cost? So the bike cost me $14.5. I bought it used with about 3,000 miles on it. If you wanna know how much I've spent in mods, I have no idea. You could try to add it up and then let me know in the comments. That'd be dope. Uh, but honestly, I don't wanna know because I'm probably just gonna disappoint myself with how much money I've spent.
So hopefully you guys liked the video. And if you guys did like the video, please make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. For one, it really helps us get our name out there. And then two, it shows us that you guys like the videos that we're making, the content that we're making. Keeps us motivated to keep making videos for you guys. But if you guys have any questions about anything in the video, please hit us up in the comments or on Instagram. Me and Rod are always answering questions, trying to help dudes out. And if you're in the local San Diego area, hit me up and we can go ride. All right, take it easy.